A new documentary called Keep On Keeping On is receiving a lot of praise. It follows jazz legend Clark Terry and his mentoring of blind piano prodigy Justin Coughlin. Music powerhouse Quincy Jones is a producer of the film and also has a starring role. Take a look. The first time I met C.T. was when I was studying at William Patterson University. We would meet and he would teach us these amazing standards. I think he's one of the most talented pianists that ever walked the face of this earth. That's the most important thing you can give as a young musician. Somebody believes in you. Makes you believe in yourself more. Quincy Jones and Justin Coughlin, good morning. Great to have you guys. Terrific, yeah, terrific documentary. Pisces, I can't believe it. Yeah, we're, you pointed out that we're all Pisces. Pisces Posse. <laughs> Pisces Posse. <laughs> Tell me about, as I put in this DVD to watch to screen this, I thought I was going to see a story about Clark Terry, this incredible trumpeter. But what I saw was this incredible teacher, this man who, wanted, who wants to share his music. Quincy, when did you, the two of you meet and how did you meet? I was 12 years old and I, I lived in Seattle. And I had just come out of Chicago because my father was, was a carpenter for the Jones Bloods, most notorious gangsters in the history of America. And Capone, in 1941, I'm going to make this long, with Capone, they made $110 million, like a billion dollars. He ran them out of Chicago, Capone did. And my father put us on a trailway bus, my brother and I, and went to Seattle. And it all happened in Seattle. You know. And then Justin, uh, as we mentioned, at 12 you, years old, was, well, that was the answer with Clark Terry. 12 years old. Yeah. And, with and, and Justin, you were uh, uh, in a college ensemble. Clark Terry kind of helps you guys, mentors you. But as we see in this film, you become friends. How did, yeah. that, how did that evolve? Well, uh, the director of the film, Alan Hicks, uh, was also in that band with me at William Patterson University. And uh, he played the drums. And Al had been quite close with Clark when I joined the school. And he thought it would be a good idea for me to go and meet Clark because at the time Clark was losing his sight because of diabetes. And Billy, really that's, I, I, you know, I went to the house and I'm like, oh God, man, I'm going over to Clark Terry's house. And uh, I shared with him my own experiences since I had been blind since I was 11 and sort of shared encouragement and just like, you know, things work out. And, and that's how the relationship started. And yeah, you, you moved to New York, you're, you know, and we all know it's hard being a jazz musician. This is the place to be, but it's hard to make your way. Yeah. Um, but you, you surround yourself by people like Quincy Jones and Clark Terry. Do you pinch yourself sometimes? Oh, absolutely. Well, you know, life just, when life happens, you go with it. You know, uh, getting, to, getting to know Clark and then having a relationship with him is something that I'll be, I'll cherish the rest of my life for sure. And then to have this experience I was at Clark's house um, while they were filming and we're there doing what we do hanging out and he's teaching and uh, we get a call saying Quincy Jones is is coming and he's got a project that he wants to do with Clark and we're like what well yeah you know, didn't we all we were doing oh, we we're gonna do an album with him and Snoop Dogg they're both from St. Louis mumbles and rap you know and and Snoop Dogg didn't show up he said I want you to hear this little dude man this piano player and that's how we met